Wow. One, two, three. Funny thing is, I had a four, then I got a five, then I got a three, then I got a two. <laughs> I guess it's just luck. <laughs> I originally come from Uganda and um, after some time I'm now here in the US and we're just a happy family. Okay. Bye. I have always been on this evening shift. It was around three o'clock to midnight. I trained in special education as a teacher with the deaf, but I had to run away from my life. That is basically what happened. Because if I didn't do so, I think I would be dead by now. My name is Grace. I'm a mother of four. Growing up, I knew I was going to be a big person. I'm going to work hard. I'm going to try my best and study, and I knew I would be successful. I grew up in Uganda where men abuse women, and I never thought marriage was going to be anything to think about. But when I met George in Chicago, it wasn't hard for me to think of him as somebody I could live with and maybe plan with we learned to put experiences behind. And since I met him, I don't, I've never regretted a single day of, of knowing George. I went to the first college in Uganda. The then government, you know, encouraged students to form a student union. I was a branch president. But we never knew it would be a problem because when the next governments came in power, they looked at us as supporters of the previous government. So this caused problems for us. Yeah, this one of my friends who was um, in student activities with me, they arrested him, picked him up and he never, he was never seen again. Of course, you don't ask where he went. You don't have to ask. They were actually looking for me too. I was kidnapped by some security agents and for three years, I was in detention in Uganda. The conditions I was in were terrible. It was a life full of torture. It was so rough. It was, you know, I don't want to talk about the different ways of torture, but torture in different ways. For some reason, I don't know, I was taken to a hospital, and when we reached the hospital, I decided to run, to flee. A priest assisted me to find my way out of there. Yeah. Actually, this priest processed my travel documents and he took me up to the airport. I was so scared, I thought somebody would grab me at the airport, but it went well, I just went through. I remember when I came out of the plane, it was cold, I didn't know about winter, but all I knew was I felt I was free now. Yeah, initially my asylum was denied, so I was given a date to appear in court before the immigration judge. But I did not appear in court because I was actually sick. I did not follow up because I, I didn't know how, how heavy it was and how dangerous it was missing a court date. George was dealing with some of the physical aftermath of the torture he had endured. He did not make it to the court hearing that he was scheduled for. This began a downward spiral of horror for the family. I was taken to a detention center now, south of 
Chicago told me to take off my own clothes and put on those suits, the pink jail suits. It's a feeling like they're just sending you back into the hands of the same people who made you flee the country. The detention of asylum seekers is particularly problematic because many have undergone trauma in the first place before leaving their countries, and to detain them and confine them can trigger some of the psychological reliving of, of what they have previously experienced. There is definitely an attitude at these detention centers that these individuals are expendable, uh, that their rights don't matter. That mentality permeates, I think, all of our immigration enforcement. Top officials have that kind of mentality, but it's protections that our Constitution embodies are not limited only to U.S. citizens. The Supreme Court has said so time and again. Detention is detention. The moment somebody says you, you are detained, you have no freedom. I knew if he went back to Uganda, he was definitely going to die. And uh, I didn't know what that meant for us. It was my first time driving the city with the girls. I recall her coming straight into my office. It's heartbreaking to see this uh, mom with a newborn uh, completely uh, in despair because she doesn't know what will happen to her husband. She fought hard and she, she made sure that George comes back home. We were blessed to have her. And we happen to be really, really loved and favored by the community. They believe in us. We have very nice, good friends. Here since 2007, and the community is great. They have made us feel accepted, feel loved, and they've been very supportive. We work hard seven days a week. How do you feel, Mr. Duran? How is the dizziness? Well, when I get up, I feel like I'm going to fall over fall backwards. Over. They want me to check my inner ear. They want me to get a boot for my foot. Every time we go to the doctor, he has something new. They're going to end up a robot. <laughs> so we don't really take breaks. We don't take vacation. Normally, whenever we, we are sending money to Uganda, we let the kids see how much we have. And we negotiate with them. Should we send school fees to somebody to go to school or should we sign up for a soccer? And I think they have been watching how we live and they appreciate it. If I want to buy like clothes, it's better to pick the less expensive ones that we can use the rest of the money to send it. I like shoes and stuff, like basketball shoes and stuff. So I'll ask my mom if I want to buy it. But like, I get it when she sends me to see Uganda because some people there don't even have shoes, so you think about them more. We thought it is really important for us to all go to Uganda. We have a very big family in Uganda, and they are looking forward to meeting the cousins they have had about uncles they have seen pictures of. So who is the Armstrong who can take this? Oh, we still have plenty of room. Good, right? OK, let's just roll this off the scale. Good. There. Thank God for little sons, right? Everybody wants to see them. Yeah. My mother especially now wants to see the, the grandchildren. I'm hoping our kids will really appreciate what they have by watching what the other kids go through every single day. We've tried to shelter the kids yeah. from certain things that they've been asking. They will have to understand our struggles that led to our coming to America in details. I want them to know some bit of the realities. They need to learn how to survive and how to behave in other places. Of course, you, you have to stay away from certain From certain things, conversations. Certain, yeah. But now that I am a citizen, it's different. 
we are not going to keep away from our country of origin. That's why we're doing what we're doing. So they can love our people, connect with our people, know their roots and know where we come from. I can't help but feel pride that I played any part in their being able to be here in safety. And so many of the immigrants that we receive in the United States are some of the best of the best of, of their societies, of their home countries. George and Grace have adapted so well to the United States, but I know there's something about going back to your homeland and your roots and, and really knowing that that's a part of you, appreciating it, embracing it. This will be the first time the kids are there, right? Yeah, first time. Everybody's just waiting. <laughs> I'm looking forward to seeing a giraffe. <laughs> we'll get to meet other kids like that play soccer. I might as well play with them too. Thank you, Grace, for all this food. <laughs> I think Grace and George personify, and their children personify, that spirit of how this country came to be. And I think that's an important lesson to us about the values that immigrants bring and contribute and represent also the best of what we hope to be in this country. This is my mother, my father, and this is me here, the smallest. George. <laughs> <laughs> My children will be future leaders of the country. They are teaching me so many things now, and I'm wondering what they will teach me when they go to college. I don't know what they will teach me because they have taught me a lot already. We have been able at least to, to celebrate our, our freedom, our achievements. <laughs> <laughs> we feel happy about our kids, but I know that there's a younger lady in Uganda who is a mother with big dreams, but her children cannot be what my children are because of where they are. <laughs> our kids are lucky to be here because whatever they wish to be, they will be.